Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here with... Brandy. And the Critters, of course. I had a spot on my glasses. Drive me nuts. Hang on here. Hang on. So, it is February 3rd, 2022. It is Thursday afternoon at 2.31 p.m. That's part of the reason, too, that I have an easier time keeping track of the date and the day. It's because of the videos I do. Very true. Really helps because, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's always kind of been a thing of mine, too. That I always want to know what the day of the week is. I don't know. It's just important yeah. to me for some reason. Yeah. So, anyway, um, got a storm rolling in, like, with almost every place else. Um, I think we're just going to get the very, very fringes of, of the, the nasty weather. So, we might not get any at all. But you can tell the temperature change and stuff. Is it still supposed to be possibly 70 tomorrow then? Because we supposed, we were like marveling that yesterday was supposed to be about 70, but now it may not be. Well, uh, as of today, right now it's 69 degrees. Nice. It doesn't look that warm, yeah. but. And yeah, um, see, there's a 40% chance of precipitation today. And when I let the dogs out earlier, it was just kind of spitting. And uh, yeah, and tomorrow. There's a 91% chance of precipitation and a high of 70, a low of 33. Wow. And then Saturday. That might mean being back in Wyoming. Yeah. Saturday, the high is they're projecting 42 degrees and a low of 22. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We used to laugh when we lived in Wyoming that you could, you could <clears throat> run both the heater and the air conditioner the same day. And I know that's the same it is in a lot of places. So. If you're in the path of the storm and the cold weather, stay warm, stay warm, stay warm. I hope if you're really in the path, go ahead and get what you need and get ready to hunker down. You're going to be spending some time with your family. You guys can play cards. You guys can visit, you know, maybe can get the kids involved with helping you cook in the kitchen or doing something fun. Be good. Um, you know, some of my most fond memories would be times that, Everything got shut down. Wyoming very rarely shuts everything down. Like here, the governor here in North Carolina <laughs> declared a state of emergency last time when there was like an inch. Some places got two inches. It's like, really? That is nothing. <clears throat> but um, I didn't work any on the reef last night. I was having some pain issues, and I just kind of sat there and loom knitted um, for a while and make another hat, of course. Well, that's what's on That's what's on my round right now. This is just another pattern of mine. Um, it's that one that's the diamond, then I'll have the diamond, this uh, spots travel, so it looks like it's kind of twisted. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing a new thing with my pattern. Is I have five basic patterns that I really like. One of them I don't like that much because it's kind of a pain in the butt to do, but I like how it looks. But, and then I take, when I'm done with that, and I'll combine like two bat, two patterns into one. So I'll do part of one pattern and move it, move the stitches over and do another pattern. It gives some unique, very cool outcomes. I like doing stuff like that. Brad, I will have you know got excited yesterday because he was finding more and more of our stuff. But he, he got excited because he found more of my yarn. He had to bring it out to me. And it's, I got excited then because, you know, you're like, oh, I forgot how pretty you are. <laughs> well, and there was only, what, five skeins. Yeah, but or still. four and a half. Yeah, I was know. still excited. So, um, other than that, we did a small order with Aldi's this morning through Instacart. Um... <laughs> And, but the, the gal, bless her heart, she's a real young chopper. She really messed up her order. I wanted some semi-sweet chocolate chips because I wanted to make some reduced sugar chocolate chip cookies for Mr. Heidi. I was going to surprise him with some niceness. Here, my love, here's these cookies that I've slaved over in a hot oven for you. But she said they were out of them, and she gave us a bag of chocolate chip cookies. Not gave us. Replaced it. 
I'm like, you shouldn't even have been in the cookie aisle. Were you not in the baking aisle, you would have found other chocolate chips if that without of that particular brand. Then I wanted three yogurts. We buy the big vanilla yogurts and then we add our own frozen fruit or whatever. And on the order, it showed that I got those. What I got was three boxes of cheeses. Again, big difference, you know. I mean, that kind of stuff is going to happen. You just kind of laugh at Instacart's really good about um, refunding your money or making it right. So, um, yeah, we did that. I was thinking of something else that she messed up on. The Cheez-Its. The... The yogurt. The chocolate chips. Oh, yeah, the chocolate chips. The milk. She got a really good cold date on okay, it. Okay, you asked her to. Though. Yeah, no, I didn't have a chance to. Oh, you didn't? Oh, that's no. right. That's yeah. right. Okay. So anyway, bless her heart. She tried, though. Everything else was good. Except for I ordered one box of, of gallon uh, Ziploc bags. I got two, evidently. Is that what you said? Yeah. Are they 20 count or 40? 40. Okay. That's what I... So... And, but... I always wonder, too, if, because I know sometimes they will combine, maybe they have a, another order, so they'll take both orders and then, you know, stop and deliver. And so that could be, too, why I got the Cheez-Its. Yep, the Cheez-Its were in a bag with other stuff that you had ordered. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I didn't know because you, no, you did the thing, so. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're just getting... You know, we always need a little bit of more fresh stuff, like I need some more bananas. I eat bananas every day because it helps some with the, with the Charlie horses and just general muscle cramps, uh, you know. And I lose quite a bit of potassium, so um, I did some other stuff. Like Brad likes to have potato chips or chips, and though we don't buy many, um, occasionally I'll buy him a bag, and what I like to buy him and what he really likes is tortilla chips. So, you know, I guess we kind of feel like it's a little healthier than regular chips because he's not going to use dip, he's going to use salsa and, you know, or just eat them like they are. Yeah, usually I don't use salsa. I'm not a big chip eater, so, you know, I, I used to love potato chips, but I have to stay away from them because of the salt content, so, um such a life. I had a horrible time sleeping last night. I called you, I called Brad at 7 in the morning. <laughs> you know, to know, let him know that I hadn't slept yet and that um, about that I had changed the, since I hadn't slept, I changed the Aldi's order instead of them delivering at 1 o'clock. They were going to deliver at 11 o'clock. And we were still sitting up. He came back. We were sitting there visiting and we got notification that it was 9 o'clock. She was done checking out and everything else. She was on her way. <laughs> so Brad's running to get clothes on and, you know, he had underwear on. But, you know, get shorts and a shirt on and all of that. They're always real, really good, though. We have a little, you know, one of those little classical shopping cart things. And um, Brad gets that out and they put stuff in there for him. And that's really nice. And there's been a few people where I've asked them, you know, would, did you want to take the cart out to their car? And, yeah. You know. Have they ever? A few times. Okay, good. I, know, I remember one time you you asked somebody. Yeah. To. So, that's what we got going on. I'm just going to do some crafts. I do have to take some water pills. I am very swollen again. And, you know, getting a little harder to breathe. So, I need to go address that. And, um... We're not freaking out. We're gonna. I want everybody to keep sending positive vibes on this. There is a chance that Brad will not be able to have his surgery um, as scheduled because of COVID. There's so many new cases in our state, or there are just. And for the last uh, few weeks, at least, they have not been letting them do the elective surgeries, and especially with an overnight stay. So there is a chance that Brad may not 
be able to be having surgery on the 14th. He'll have it, definitely. But see, they were still already behind from when they originally had to shut everything down for COVID. And I know I'm not supposed to say that word, but oh well, I'll say the big C then. You know, I'm tired of not having, being able to say what I want to say when it affects all of our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why can we not say COVID here? Okay? This affects all of our lives. You know, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like it's not going on. For the most part, we all try to manage our lives like that. But, I mean, this this COVID has really, it has destroyed some people's lives. Not only have they lost loved ones, but they've lost their jobs. They've lost their home. I mean, things are rough uh, for a lot of people. We're very blessed if not, you know, well, you were planning on quitting the job that you had, and we just he just quit it two weeks earlier than he had already planned on doing because of, of the COVID at that time. But, so they were already behind on the surgeries because there were people that had been waiting. And so then, of course, you know, every surgery they canceled is the list. So we'll wait our turn. You know, we talked with... with um, the gal there and and at the surgeon's office and she was apologizing and it's like it's not your fault you know we, we're not mad um you know disappointed but we kind of had a feeling see we haven't ever been called by the hospital yet to set up for pre-admission <clears throat> also there's some four-hour class we're supposed to take so um we won't know till maybe monday and then we'll just do what, you know, we'll do whatever it is. See, they, what they're literally waiting to see is if, if the hospital's going to tell them whether or not they're allowed to do elective surgeries. Um, so they're taking it week by week. So that's what's going on there. You doing okay with all that? Yeah. Well, I guess that's what kind of surprises me is that this is considered elective surgery. I know. You I know. know. I disagree with that too. Yeah, because. Uh, but they're thinking because it's not life threatening. Well, they don't. They're not in your body. Yeah, and you know, and I understand what you're getting at there. No, but I'm saying they're not in your body, so they don't understand. Yeah. What the, the amount of pain. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. You know. So, I don't consider it an electric surgery, but I understand the protocol is life-threatening you know and also we really don't want him in a hospital if if there's a big risk i've not been going to the emergency room at all um because i don't want to expose myself to it or him to it uh, we, we haven't gone out to eat we have not been going literally anywhere what we do now to get out of the house is we'll go for a drive. Brad will go in to get prescriptions. But that's it. Yeah. That's it. Even though, like, I want to go to Dollar Tree and stuff, it's not that I have to go. And I'm going to wait a couple weeks. Um, I just want to expose myself or expose him to anything more than absolutely has to be done. So, you know, <clears throat> trying to be extra careful. So... But it'll happen, oh, even yeah. if they have to cancel it. And I sure hope they don't, but let's just prepare ourselves. that if they do, we're just going to keep making the best of it yep. like we have been. Yep. And it will happen. Yep. Keep pushing but on. I don't want you to be exposed where you're. it's a, a danger mm -hmm. to your life, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would, I wouldn't be able to handle that. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, and that's one of the things um, that... I think you and I talked to, I mean, you and I talked about it, is, you know, going to visit family. And, you know, where I, you know, I wouldn't think that would be a real high risk of, you know, but it was because there's. He came back there, and yeah. he had been exposed to, everybody had been exposed to three people that came down with it. Mm -hmm. One of them died. Yeah. Just what, three days later? Yeah. And it was a friend of his brother's. Yeah. And Brad, they had, he had, he had taken Brad over there and introduced him to, yeah. and everything else. And Brad told me, oh, yeah, what a nice guy he was and yeah. stuff. And, 
Then his brother called, you know, a few days later and said, hey, guess what? Yeah. You know? He's no longer with us. Yeah. <clears throat> that really strikes home hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of people that we talk to are depressed, too. It's a hard thing, guys. If you're feeling down, it, uh, you're wondering what the heck's wrong with you. Yeah. But talk to other people. That is where the internet is a lovely thing. Yes. Because even though we all have to isolate, we can still talk on the internet. Um, you know, because uh, you do feel very isolated. I am now kind of adopted the philosophy of, well, I can still get out of the house. I can always go outside in my yard. You know, we can always go for a drive. Though, you know, that costs money. I'm trying to, we try to keep the, the price of the use of gasoline down. We really do. Well, um, yeah. You probably need to go out and start to keep it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, how long has it been? Yeah, you better start it today. Okay. Um, because at least then we can still be social. But I was kind of out the uh, a attitude of, well, it doesn't, I can occupy myself with other things, so I don't have to go outside. And, you know, the depression comes and goes. I reach out and I tell you guys when it's starting to get to a point that maybe I'm a little worried or whatever. And, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's okay. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it okay and everything. I work hard at that. But, is what it is. You know, we're nearing the two year mark. Yeah, well. Um, when did you quit? Did you quit March or April? Uh, March 15th, Mar- I believe. March 15th we'll of 2009. 2020? Yeah. Yeah. So we're coming up on the two year mark. Yeah. That's pretty, you know. Amazing. I know yeah. we, we kind of felt like something was up, like I said, because he'd never gotten a phone call from the hospital setting up anything. He's never gotten a phone call about this class we're supposed to take um, or anything. And um, we called yesterday and they said, well, they're going to have a meeting today and discuss, you know, who uh, who all they're doing surgery on and, 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 and each case. And then they would let us know, well, they hadn't, so Brad called this afternoon, and they're like, well, you know, I think she said they're, she might know by Monday. Yeah. Because see, Thursday is when we're supposed to go do all this pre-admission stuff. So, we kind of figured something was up. Yeah. And with the COVID cases and stuff, there's so many new ones just each day, so that's why we just stay, we just go stay away. You know, you know, and, and the hard part for me is um, trying to keep trying to keep my morale up. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I mean, you feel like you feel like you're in constant pain. Well, you don't feel like it. You know, you you're are. in constant pain. Mm-hmm. You know, and I try really, really hard not to get down about that because I know that affects you too. He got very upset the other morning because he wanted to come in and, and lay in bed with me and cuddle, and he couldn't because of his disability because he was in so much pain and he can't really move, and he was so upset that, you know, you you just about had tears in your eyes when you said that when, you, when I woke up and you were sitting on the bed and you said that, yeah. you know, and, you know, yeah, that makes it hard. It makes it hard for both of us that, yeah. you know, and, and, um, that's part of the reason that we don't sleep in the same bed, too, is because, God, I, I worry that I'm going to accidentally, you know, hit him on that side or something, because, but it'll happen. It'll happen. It will. And. You know, just got to stay positive. With the big C, who knows? We're just going to have to all keep, kind of keeping our, keeping each other up. Being there for each other, going to find a lot of new hobbies, 
that's what I wish we could find something for you to do when you're sitting there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's hard because of the hand trim. Yeah. But I don't know if you're really in, even interested in finding a new hobby, but. No, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I got to find my uh, jewelry findings because I've got them. I've got them in uh, one of those clear, clear plastic trays. Okay. And I know I've seen it several times. I know several we've times. seen them. Yeah. Are, are you sure they're not over there somewhere? Mm -hmm. Huh. I'll look again. But yeah, because yeah. I know we've seen them. I know. And trying to figure out what the hell I did with them. Hmm. Yeah. We'll find them. Oh, I know. You know, if not, we'll, we'll get some more. You know, yeah. I don't know what kind you would need. Yeah. Only I, somebody that makes jewelry, like, I know that Carol also made jewelry. Uh-huh. Um, you know. So, Carol and Kathy both had hip replacements, too, and that's been a really good, good help because, you know, they say, you know, how much pain they were in before, and then, you know, there it got much, much better after. Yeah. Words. So that really helps. The mm. words of encouragement and stuff really do help. It does. So, um, hi, Charlie. How are you doing, little man? Hmm? You've been such a love bug lately, huh? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> so, that's what's going on here. I'm just going to work on my wreath today. That And um, I'm going to work on my loom knitting. Easy with the tail and the little poodle doodle. You gotta tell them about how her what's going on. Oh Lord! Oh my! Through here. This morning, Jelly Bean, and last night, it's just rocketing through the house. She is like a completely different dog than when we adopted her, and she is just so spunky and sassy and runs through the house. And you hear, Duh, 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 duh. and sometimes you hear the bigger dog chasing two, going thump thump thump. And, um, she just, and she's talking, especially talks with Brad all the time. She was having a whole conversation with him this morning, wasn't she? Yes, she was. She looks at him and he'll say something and then she'll just, rawr, 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 rawr. right, Jelly Bean? <laughs> right? You've been so spunky and happy. She is just so happy here. I'm just amazed. And we have rescued a lot of dogs and cats <clears throat> in our, in our lifetime. We really have. It, but I have never seen an animal turn around that fast and be that happy and secure. She wanted to just take on the whole world yesterday. She was looking out the window, and she was ready to take on the entire world. And it's like, at one point in time, I saw that she was growling. She had that real low, throaty growl because somebody was driving down the street. And I'm like, they can do that. you got to let them do that. Calm down. <laughs> she sure she thinks she loves to crawl right in between us. And we're both pet and she just didn't have it just like uh. And then you gotta turn around because I usually have Charlie like right over my shoulder. So then it's time to give him lovin's and then Nixie lovin's and you know, we got a whole lot of happiness going on. The cat well, just mainly stays on your bed, I think. Yeah. Well the those pictures I took last night of uh, you and I were both laying on our backs, and then Charlie, Charlie was kind of laying on top of both of our faces. Yeah, he was laying on top of my face. In fact, I kept turning my face to the side because so, you know she didn't crush my nose. I'm like, hello, yeah, I'm under here. <laughs> that was funny, right, Charlie? The him was having a, a ball. Yep. No, you cannot go back to Charlie. Okay, are you ready to go to bed? Is that what's wrong with you? I'm not going to bed yet, Charlie. Does that make you sad? It does? Yeah. <laughs> He's hinting. I, uh, no, I'll never forget when Max would get, Max was our greyhound. And he'd get, he'd get tired. He'd go put himself to he'd bed. He'd put himself to bed, yeah. You know? Yeah. TJ would too. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. TJ would, she, CJ claimed herself to be our dog. She was actually my brother's dog, and that's when he was living with us. And he really, really super neglected this dog and, and, and didn't pay any attention. So she just glommed on to me. Yep. 
And, you know, then she just, he would try to get her to go downstairs to bed and she'd run to me or else she'd run to my bedroom. And so it just got to a point where about 10 o'clock, she just go get up and go amble off into the bedroom. Yeah. Wait for me on the bed with Missy, you know. Yeah. Oh, you look like you're going to fall asleep, Charlie. You're getting pet by the dad. So, Yeah. It's been, they've been downright entertaining. I know a lot of people that did not have pets before are now getting dogs and cats because they're home all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, how many people do you talk to, even do a business wise, that are working from home still? Uh huh, a lot. That's what people want to say that they, well, this, the COVID thing is stupid. We still haven't returned back to the workforce being working in offices and stuff for the most yeah. part. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah, see, I know some of it is the government, you know, fucking up the numbers. I don't know. I was going to try and put it some other way, but I don't know any other way to yeah. put it. We all know that, and I'm not going to be a statistic for the government either. That's why, you know, unless I was pretty darn sure I had it, I'm not going to go in and get tested because they just want the statistics. And I'm not a statistic. I'm a person. Everybody's a person. It does alarm me that I just read that Pfizer is now pushing to have that vaccine for kids five and younger. Now, I don't know. Tell me, guys, how you feel about it. I'm kind of on the fence because I need more information, but is this totally safe for kids to be having? You know, you worry about it. But you do know they get exposed even more, especially if they're going to a preschool, a daycare, yep. regular school. So I don't know. It's scary times. It really is. All we can do is, is I found talking to people even on the Internet, at least it makes me feel not so isolated. Yeah. Like, since we called and you talked with that nurse. Yeah. And that's why I started asking a question. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm curious. I'm like, so are they, have they been canceling the, the surgery? Well, yeah, you know. And she's like, I'm sorry. And it's like, no, it's not your fault. We just, you know, want to know. We kind of suspected. We're the type that we would like. I always do the pros and cons. I'm going to deal with the worst case scenario. And then... We're going to hope for the best. And so, you know, we're going to hope for the best, but we're going to right now psychologically kind of get ourselves ready for Mm -hmm. the fact that if you cannot have it right now and we have to wait, then we're just going to have to wait. Yeah. You know, and that's all we can do. It's all any of us can do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, gee, there's people that have, have died. Their family members can't be there because of it. You know, that's really sad. I watched a special on that. And that was very sad that these, you know, it's like a, di- a dateline thing or, or one of those, 2020 or something. But, you know, it's really sad that they had to say goodbye to their loved ones through a tablet. But that's all they could do. There's lots of babies that have been born that nobody could be there. Yeah. Well, look at, you know, there was, I remember, um, there was somebody that you uh, watched on YouTube, you know, you regularly watch and. I believe they had a child graduating and the, yes. the graduation or the, the after party was, uh, yes. they, everybody drove by. And it was like fathering autism. And so, yeah, everybody drove by and honked. Some people had presents and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of people have had to do that for birthdays and, and such. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yeah. You know, and all the kids that are, it's um, really screwing up their schooling. And a lot of these mm-hmm. kids. It put a lot of kids a year behind. It really did. Especially if, you're, if your child is at home and you were still working outside the home, it, it's really an impossible situation because you're not there to keep them focused and not, them not be searching the internet or playing a game instead of doing, doing their classwork and, and being involved. Or... If you do work from home, all of a sudden you're trying to work from home full time and manage your child who's taking online classes. And some kids do really great. Like, okay, I'm the type, I do really great with online classes. 
In fact, that was one of my preferred ways to take some of the classes that were really essentially very boring to me. But there's people like I think you said that, that that's not really the thing for you. I, don't I know other list, people but... that see, and I always just acted like it was time for class. Yeah. You know, but um, some people do great in that arena, and some people do not. So, but we're going to handle it. It's all okay. We're going to keep things like they are, and all we can do is make the best out of whatever happens. Yep. So, you know, Brad and I help each other out. Some days I have better days than others. Some days he has better days than others. i tell you one thing, he's usually in constant pain. Um, we deal with that. You know, I can take one look at him and tell you just by... The facial expression, Julie, how much pain that he is in. And, you know, sometimes I have to be a bit of a drug pusher, <laughs> you know, because he will get busy doing things. And I'll say, did you take your pain medication? No, not yet. I'm going to. Two hours go by. Did you take your pain medication? No, not yet. I'm going to. Sometimes I just have to make the man stop. And I'll hand him his, his pills, and I'm like, you need to take your pills. <laughs> How many times since you and I have been married that you will randomly walk up to me and... I don't put, do that anymore. No, you Long don't. time ago, yeah, cold mess, and yeah. I just throw some in his mouth and, you know, he swallow it and then go, what did I take? <laughs> but now that you're on so many prescription meds yeah. and, death and stuff, I don't do that. No, cause, you don't. Um, he has to be aware of what he's taking at all times. You know, we all do. So, but yeah, we're going to make the best of it. Yeah. All of us. Yep. You know, if you really find yourself down and stuff, maybe it's time for a new hobby. So take a look. There's all kinds of wonderful hobbies. You could do resin pours, adult curling. You could do loom knitting, crochet, or regular knitting. Or there's even hand finger knitting and stuff. <laughs> Charlie and Heidi, you can make a dog be quiet. Come here, brother. What? Come here. Come here, son. Come here, sit down. Love you. There, are you better now? <laughs> That's what he wanted. I'll come over here and bark, and then my mom will kiss my face. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's all happy. <laughs> and he comes over. And I have to protect the poodle from his tail because it's like a whip. Oh man! You know, but um, you know, like I said, there's there's finger knitting. Maybe you want to make bracelets. Maybe you want to learn how to weave. Um, geez, sew, cross stitch. Um, what else? Do, diamond paintings. Like an easy one. If you want, if you're not really sure, buy an inexpensive kit of diamond painting. You can get them through Walmart.com. You can get them through. I usually get mine through Amazon. Um, can you watch him with that tail? Because it really hurts him when he's like a whip. But um, you know, find something to to keep yourself busy. I like to put on a a good movie. You know, and uh, um. Trying to protect the boodle from his tail, okay. um, and get lost in a craft. If you want to do some artwork, cooking, if you want to learn how to cook something different, there's a lot of online classes too that you can do of different different hobbies and stuff. I mean, maybe you want, maybe you do enjoy chatting on a phone and stuff, and you know, be doing that. Maybe you just want to watch your husband be weird. He's cooking tonight. I was going to cook tonight. I was going to cook, um, I think it was cod fillets. Flounder. Flounder. Flounder, and I was going to make some more gratin potatoes and asparagus, but he's going to do that since I have to take water pills, and so I have a commitment to be one with the bathroom. Right, Charlie? Shall I be one with the bathroom now? We got to start some more laundry, because, you know. Oh. Goodness. Yeah, after you're uh, after you're done with this, I gotta go do. I want to go do dishes. Mm. And then, you know, because I should have done them. I gotta time. wrap my legs again. They're still leaking. Like, you know, I had them wrapped on well last night. 
Well, not last night, this morning. <laughs> okay. So, we decided we were going to eat breakfast 7 in the morning. And so we could take our morning pills. I think you said you'd already taken your morning pills. You ate a little something out there. Out in the front room. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but yeah. But, so, I'm super tired now. Because, you know, Brad and I have been talking, and sometimes the other person just talking and stuff will make you where you can go to sleep. I'm falling asleep while I'm eating this bagel. And it had just a, a real thin a, a smithering of, of peanut butter. Because I like it when he toasts my bagel and then he puts peanut butter on it, kind of melts. And so I'm trying to hold, and I keep dropping it. And so yeah. I end up dropping it on my nightgown and end up dropping it, you know, on my leg and, you know, and it's adhering really nice because of the peanut butter. <laughs> and then you, Brad would be like, honey, you're falling asleep, don't fall asleep. And I'm like, no, I'm like, why are you being mean to me? <laughs> you know how you get when you're super tired. I'm like, leave me alone. You talked to me about a refractor or some crap. You said some channel name, I guess, that you wanted me to look up or something. And I'm like, I can't right now, I'm too tired. There's something we're supposed to talk about, reformation or refat. I don't know. Maybe it'll come to you someday. Okay. But so, that's about all I got today, guys. <laughs> Pretty boring now that you've had to put up with us again. My leg hurts, so. It does it kind of ache. It's the weather change. You guys all notice that when you feel the weather, you know, weather pattern coming in, it just makes your old bones ache. Remember my great-grandmother telling me that. Sometimes she would sit downstairs, and I was the odd child that would go downstairs and talk to her. I'd sit there on the floor, and I'd listen to her tell stories about, like, what it was like when she was a, a young woman and stuff. I was just so enchanted with all of that. Wasn't she born in, like, 1900? She was born in the year 1900. Okay. And, like, she had lost a set of twins because she got, run over by a horse and, and carriage, you know, that's the way it was back then. Um, and she would tell me, like, what it was like, what it took to do laundry, and just, and all that was just very, but she would sit there and tell me, because everybody always called me Terry Ann, she would sit there and tell me, oh, my knees really hurt, Terry Ann. What she wanted, she wanted me to rub her knees, and and I don't doubt that they did hurt a lot. Um, so I would get out the muscle rub, she was talking, tiger balm and I would I would put some on her knee and rub it while she was you know I'm five or six while she's telling me these stories you know pretty soon somebody would yell down the stairs and want to know if I was down there because they had finally noticed after a couple hours I wasn't <laughs> you know say yeah I'm getting down here <laughs> you know I used to love to go down my grand great grandmother's she had all those very old pictures of like when she was a, a, she used to be like a CNA, and she had she was holding a baby and had a couple others around her. And uh, I never met my great grandfather; he'd already passed on. And she'd tell me stories of other <coughs> people that, that would have been my great aunts and stuff that had passed on. And you know, but it was just she had a she <coughs> had a cuckoo clock. It actually, had a cuckoo in it. It was one of the real old ones. Oh wow! And um. That was something that she wanted me to have and had told me. I don't know who ever got it. I never fought with anybody about what they took. They took some things that I had made her and stuff, and I would have liked to have had those back, but I never even said anything because, like I said, I figure somebody goes through and they take that stuff, maybe they need it more than I do. I'm just looking for sentimental things anyway. I'm not looking for, you know, I have an old diary of hers that even has some of the um, ration cards. Yeah. And, From World War II, wasn't it? Yeah, and her talking about different family members and, and stuff. And it was just kind of nice to see what she was feeling as a young woman, like when her mom died, because they were originally from back east. I thought it was like Pennsylvania or something. Really? Was, yeah. And then it slowly migrated across the country. So, um, yeah, it's all been very interesting. I guess what made me think of that is because the other night when we were cleaning out a drawer, 
And this sounds so silly, guys. You guys know how much we both loved his grandmother. I will not cry when I tell this story. Or else I'll poke myself in the eye if I do. So that I won't, I'll have a good reason to cry. But I found the nail files that we had bought her. And because she loved to have me file her nails. And, you know, just kind of do her nails. I don't think I haven't painted them. I know at one time I put a, one time I put a clear coat on just to help protect them. But, and then I would rub her hands with lotion. And she just enjoyed that, you know, and I enjoyed doing it for her. But I found the nail files and stuff. I mean, cause that's what I wanted when she passed away. Uh, you know, I asked Brad, I said, well, is that cup still there? I think I told this story the other day. I'm sorry. Um, they had her nail file, the nail files and stuff. And he goes, yeah, I'm like, I'd really love to have that. If that'd be okay with everybody else. Because, you know. And as we've been finding more of your mom's stuff, yeah. um, you know, that stuff is precious. Yeah. The pictures that, of them are precious, you know. So, I didn't cry this time. Well, I can still cry. We start talking about her and just how much we miss her, and I'll start crying. And sometimes I can get him to start crying too. Like, well done, Teresa. <laughs> you can just tell her I make you cry. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, we, we sure did love you, Grandma. Yeah. Lady. She was the type where I could walk in, not really have to say a word. We sit there and hold hands. And you just felt like totally at peace. You felt so much love and that everything else in the world didn't really matter. It would all give me okay. And that's what she would tell you right now. Because she waited 20 years to have her hip surgery because she was afraid to have it. Is She would tell you it's going to happen. Yep. You would know you would get so much encouragement for her. And she would tell you about how much her hip hurt her for so many oh, years. Yeah. When I met her, she could hardly walk. First time I met her. Because her hip was that bad. Um, but, yeah. We'll make it happen. Yeah. So don't get down. Okay? Nope. Not we're, gonna. We're going to cross our fingers, hold our breath. No, I don't want to hold my breath. <laughs> that seems to not be something anybody's happy about. No. But it, it will happen when it's supposed to happen. We just have to keep up the faith and doing the best we can. Yep. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. except that some days are going to be more difficult than others. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. All going to work out. And just think of it, if they do postpone, it just gives us a little longer to get everything in line for when you can have the surgery. Mm -hmm. But if there's somebody that's been waiting a year in the same boat as you, we want them to have that surgery yeah. first because, you know, that's just the way we are. Yeah. But we're going to get it done. Oh, yeah. I won't get discouraged about my arms and my shoulders and neck, and you don't get discouraged about your hip, okay? Okay. You know. It's nice thing, too, is he has, his, he has two vibration pads, right? Um, actually, we have three. Yeah. But, so he has one out here in his chair, and he has one in the bedroom, and we prop up the pillows a certain way so he can lean back. It's, I'll make it almost like a chair so he can use that pad. And the bonus thing is, when he turns that on, and it vibrates, it, it vibrates the whole mattress. So the dogs and I are like, it feels kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, well, remember those, uh, the coin-operated beds that a lot of the hotels had? I never was in a hotel that had one. Really? So. No. Yeah. I would have liked to have been. Did you get to use it? Yeah. Was it cool? Yeah, uh, no. No? No. Did it bounce all over? Yes. That would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I remember there was a um, there was a motel in Laramie when we go down and visit Grandma and Grandpa, mm -hmm. and I don't know why that particular trip we ended up staying in the hotel mm -hmm. or in the motel, and it was an Econo Lodge, mm -hmm. and yeah, they had the coin operated beds where you put a dime in or a nickel or whatever it was. They bounce you all over. Oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah. All right, well we're getting off here. I hope you guys are having a good day. Stay safe. Stay warm, stay home. Huh. <laughs> you know? Perfect. And remember that we love you guys. 
and we do cherish your friendship so very much. We'll be answering comments tonight, so give me your viewpoint on what you're feeling about the big C and, you know, all that we talked about. So, anyway, love you guys. Say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye, guys.